Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany. I'm a tipsy artist. Today we're painting this super cute moose. <laughs> all right, and so you can see it's a little better now. Um, all right, so he is a super cutie and he can be very versatile in the design here. So you can either um, just play something kind of generic like Merry Christmas here, or um, you could put your family name here and you can also put all of your family member names on your ornaments. So that's a really creative way to handle this. So lots of creative options here for the super cute moose. This is the really big version that I do in my live classes, my studio classes here at the Tipsy Artist Paint Palace in Guthrie, Oklahoma. So we'd love to have y'all come and see us. And we'll be doing this one this Saturday, December 10th. So we're super excited. But we also have a painting kit that's available and um, we have all the supplies for you and make it very easy. We have a traceable and all the colors picked out and brushes and everything you need and the traceable transfer paper and just on and on. You can go look at the website. So tipsyartist.com, you can find everything you need for that. But we're going to go ahead and get started with our lovely online class for the um, tutorial for this. I'm going to go ahead and place this behind me. All right, we're going to switch camera views now so that you can get a better view here of the work in progress. So let me put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing to do that. All right, so here we go. Switching now. Awesome. All right, so we've got all of our supplies laid out, a little bit of paint nearby, a bucket of water for cleaning our brushes, our little family of brushes. So here we go, we have Big Daddy, and then Little Buddy, and then Little Bits. And then I'm gonna move this so that I can see y'all. Okay. All right, got our napkins for cleaning. All right, so let's talk about this traceable. So this is pretty awesome. We've got transfer paper, the uh, traceable, and then of course the canvas underneath. So basically what you want to do is you just want to center it exactly. And I do have it lined up just the bottom of the sheet that makes it easy, bottom of the canvas. There is a little bit of overlap here. I only tape up at the very top. I place the transfer paper down first, dull gray side faces up, shiny black side faces the canvas. Then there is a pencil that will come with your kit. And so you'll want to use that to, hold on, I'm going to secure my mic real quick. A little bit of a, keep grabbing it and pulling my mic down. Okay, there we go. All right, so there is a pencil that will come with your kit. And let me just grab one so I can show you here. So every time you see a line, it basically just go right over the top. And you can kind of turn it a little bit the lead will have a shiny reflective quality to it so you can see where you've been but also that's why we only tape up at the top so that you can constantly lift and before you completely lift all of this off you can check all your work to make sure that everything has been traced and you're happy with it then you can lift this off so i am ready to do that now Okay, good deal. I'm just going to throw that away. So I've got my beautiful mousse here ready to go. And you know what? I really wanted a color visual alongside. Man, I hate to get up, but I am. I'm going to go grab that picture really quick. Hang with me. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, I'm back. Put my headphones back on. All right, so this will help to constantly keep this in front of us as we work. I had my painting nearby, so I forgot about this guy. So this will be really helpful to be able to see that as we work here. 
Okay. All right, so now I need to hook myself back up here. I have to make sure and do notes at the bottom of this in the comments to go, okay, here's where I actually start to teach. All right, we're going to go ahead and um, I will tell you, we're going to do a little bit of Sharpie work. A permanent marker comes with your kit. And I think it makes it easier, just the main shapes here, so that you can be kind of loose and free while you paint. So even if you have a little bit of over paint, you won't lose your trace. And that's going to really help you out. It helps beginners a lot to do this. So I hope everyone's having a very Merry Christmas season. I know we are. We have lots of, we've had a very, very busy season this year. Lots of classes going on. We've got a class this Saturday and I'm doing classes traveling all over. Um, at least Oh my goodness, at least four to five times a week. So it's been one of the busiest December seasons we've had in many years. We're very thankful for that. So we stay really busy with these online classes and then also a lot of studio classes. And I'm back here in my sunroom right now. kids coming home from college for Christmas too so I'm also super thankful for that and one of our kids is in Iceland right now and he is getting to see the Northern Lights. It is extraordinary. We're getting pictures on our cell phone. Be kind of delicate around the eyes here. You don't want those lines to be too thick. Now, these little circles are the reflective light, so I want to make sure and go around those. You don't want to go inside the line or else you'll block that out. You want those to pop out. Nice. And then here's our sun.
And with the kit, I did include words like Merry Christmas, lots of options for holidays, so that you could do that and be a bit more generic here. Or, of course, you could just personalize it like I have here. You can see I've got the names of my children and a last name there. So, there we go. All right, so that's going to give us a great start. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the background. So we've got some titanium white nearby. Don't need the Mars black yet, but we will soon, so I'll leave it off to the side. Next step will be to add some primary cyan blue. Just a little pea size amount. You might just do a one more little pea size amount there. And scrub a little bit of water. Make sure our brush is just moist. Then we'll pick up a dollop of that titanium white. We'll start to mix it in with our primary cyan blue. Now it can be just light blue, which is very pretty, or it can have a hint of turquoise in it. So I add a little bit of viridian. I think that's quite lovely. We'll do a little pea size off to the side there. So it kind of looks like teal. And we're going to mix a little bit of that in here too. Yeah, I love that turquoise shade in there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and start to place this into our background now. And I'm just going to press it on using the full flat side of the brush as much as possible. You can also get better coverage by holding that brush a little bit more over to the side where it's a little bit more parallel to the canvas. If it does become a little bit like a dry brush, with that peekaboo canvas coming underneath. You can also add a little bit of water to that too, and that'll help that paint really flow into the pores of the canvas. Got little tiny areas to get into. You can do more of a pencil hold. That'll give you a really nice thin line like that. And it's just a little bit easier to go around the edge work and do your cut in work. But again, we do have these nice thick black lines, so if you do happen to have a little bit of an overpaint like that, see it'll bleed through and you won't lose your work there. So that's the main reason why we did that, is to help protect the shapes that you work so hard to trace. Keep looking this all the way across. Just get nice, good coverage of the sky all throughout here in the background. So you can see how I did a little bit of an overpaint on that holly leaf. Not worried about it at all, because again, it will bleed through. And we will be able to come back in with more detail and finish that out here later on.
All right, let me check. I think I have all the sky done. Yeah. All right, so we're good to go there. A little crisscross, cross hatch with the brush, kind of feather that out here in the background. Just kind of seeing if I see any more little peekaboo white spots of the canvas. I'm going to add a little bit of water, fill that in. Alright, very pretty. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out now. These are acrylic paints that we're using. So they do set up and dry pretty quickly. So always want to make sure that you wash out your brushes very quickly. If you don't have a chance to get to them, it's actually better to let them sit in the water than it is. You never want to just leave them out on your napkin. And they will dry up with the paint on them, and you will not be able to use them anymore. They'll be hard as a rock. All right, so we're good to go on that. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start to work in a little bit of some pretty brown. So I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to mix some brown. I've got some, you can either use pure brown paint or I'm going to have to mix it. So I've got some cadmium orange here nearby. And Mars black. So I'm going to take a little bit of this black, mix it with my cadmium orange. That's going to make brown. Very nice. Now I'm going to add some water to it because we're going to do a light brown wash over the mousse here. So I'm going to make that a little bit more translucent by adding a lot of water here using the little buddy brush. And we're just going to go ahead and place this. And I'm going to whiten it up. I'm going to lighten it a little bit and then add more water. Now this is when we're very thankful for that permanent marker work because it will bleed through this paint and make it to where you can still see your work. Now it might be scaring you a little bit. See how it's definitely bleeding through nicely. So I'm going to do a light wash here over the top. Take the bigger brush and sweep that out a little bit.
nice on that. We're going to do, now we're going to add a little bit more of the white to just the brown. And this is going to be a little bit more opaque. And we're going to do this over the sign here. Moving that brush a little bit over to the side, more parallel to the canvas, doing light drags on the side of the brush, laying down that white and the brown first. And then right on the edge, you can also put in a little bit more of just a darker brown and then just kind of pull it from the edges. So now we can start to work on our base here. Right. Of the ornaments. So again, be creative. You can do whatever color that you like, but I'm gonna go ahead and follow the model here. And so we're gonna go ahead and have some cadmium red. Start with that. Little dollop of that. Then I think I'll do some primary magenta. And then we'll do some cadmium yellow. Primary yellow. Let's see. And they're brand new, they have some floral lining on top. And let's do some bright yellow green. Got a clean little buddy brush. Let's go ahead and do some cadmium yellow here. Yeah, a little bit of primary yellow in that as well. A little mix of both. So as I push this paint into the surface area, it's a round circle, so I load up the brush and then as you Hold it like a pencil, and as you push to one side, those bristles spread out. You just kind of fan the brush like a half circle to one side and then a half circle to the other side. And then you can feather out that stroke in the center. Very pretty. Like that. Then we're going to do a little bit of white with our primary magenta. And we're going to do this one here. Mama wants hot pink this time. Very pretty. 
and I'm just going to fill in some of this red. Cadmium red. And kind of feather it out when you're done. Light strokes. Holding the brush a little bit more over to the side. Very lovely. All right, we're going to grab some of that green now. That bright yellow green. Rinse out, dry off. Um, now we're going to look at adding a little bit of that more intense green into the poly. So we're going to grab some cadmium green now. Teeny amount, very teeny pea size amount there. I'll be using the little bit brush now and mixing the Cadmium green with the bright yellow green and twirl the brush into the paint. And it's little tiny curves. Very nice, let's rinse that. And then making the little holly berries is really easy. We actually use a little trick with our brush. So we're going to use the bottom here of the brush, the brush handle. We're going to dip into the cadmium red. I'm just going to press straight down. Make little berries that way. And twist the brush a little bit when you place it down. And it's just going to twist into a nice perfect little circle every time. Alright, it's coming along. So let's see. Um, let's go ahead and start to work on a little bit of shading here in the ears. So I'm going to take a little bit of this cadmium yellow and the white and a little bit of the brown that in cadmium yellow and the light brown which was that brown and white we're going to mix those two together and then a little bit brush a little twirl in there and we're going to place this right here in the center the shape will look like a parenthesis and then another parenthesis and then just kind of fill that in. A little more delicate on this side because we have the poly leaves so we have to cut in around those. And then I'm going to work back in with that darker brown right around the edge, just kind of reinforce that one more time. Okay. 
It's very lovely. Let's go ahead and mix up a little bit more of that. Have that handy nearby. And we'll do a little bit of shading here. So we've got a little bit of a light section here in the middle of the nose. So this is that cadmium yellow with the brown and the white. So we're just lightening it up a little bit here in the middle. Soft strokes as you pull down over the top of the nose. That's a repetition and lift off with a light hand. And as we go up, we kind of just curve off to one side and then lift off with a light hand. A little bit of water and softly blend this in right over the top. And we have a little bit of that same light happening right here underneath the eyes, or I'm sorry, underneath the eyes, and do a soft curve and then come down to that line. And then soft curve and then come down to that line. Just like that. And then we'll work back in with the darker brown just underneath. Kind of do a little bit of an overpaint on that lighter paint to softly transition that in so it's not just one hard line. And then we've got a little bit more of the darker paint here. I'm going to do like a little large triangle here and then just kind of work that in right here in between the two eyes and at the very top and the paint's still wet so it's kind of a nice soft transition there all right so and then we've got some darker brown i'm going to work this in over the little mouth here And then this is that light mixture now, the cadmium yellow and the light, light brown. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of an overpaint, just one little thin line right above the eyes. Like a little half circle right above the eyes. And to get a nice fine point, I just do a little twirl into the paint. That gives me a nice thin line. And a little half circle right above the eyes, just like that. Let's rinse out. And we're going to pick up a little bit of this black. We're going to paint. It's not too much water. Let's judge that. I'm going to kind of dab that out a little bit. All right, so again, a little bit of black. And just follow that black part of the eye, and I'm going to kind of avoid. I've got that little bit of brown covering that white of the eye, but I can still see it because it worked like a champ and that permanent marker just bled through the paint so it's still intact. So I'm able to come right back over the top now. And even if you can't see that little dot where it's supposed to be, don't worry about it because I'm going to teach you another little trick to help you make the white of the eye again, a little flash point. So no worries on that. We're going to come back and reinforce that. We're going to use that little trick where we use the end of our brush here. So it's all good.
All right, so we got cute little eyes, and then we're going to go ahead and make these moose nostrils right out in front here. Just reinforce this with the black. Alright, that looks awesome. Okay. And let's rinse it out. Okay, now we're going to work into those horns. So it's going to be a lot more of that white now. Maybe a little touch of that light, light brown, but mostly white. So let's bring that plate in where we can see that. So again, we had that touch of very light brown here. But again, mostly white and just a hint of that very light, light brown. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and work this into the horns. And you can leave that brown edge in place around the horns. Just a nice outline. You've already done the work, so you can leave that in place there. Looking good. So a lot of curves happening here, so I'm just holding the brush just like a pencil and just doing that little twirl into the paint to give me a nice fine point, more control, and then just working into those little curves, getting nice coverage here. Alright, so cute. It's coming along. Looking good, y'all. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and work in the little ties that connect um, to the ornaments. So, a little bit is clean and dried it off too. So, I'm going to go back into this black here. 
and you can warm it up if you would like with some lighter colors you can add more of the brown or you can make it a little more golden with the cadmium yellow I'm going to do more of like a charcoal gray here, I think. A little twist into that paint. And with that, like a little, it looks like a V. And it pulls down to a line, down to that ornament to connect it. V and pulls down to that ornament. A square top there. Again, this is just a really nice neutral, a darker charcoal gray. Then a light outline around those ornaments. That helps make them pop back out to the front there. And straight line down. that little twirl into that gray paint and it kind of thins out the top of the brush and then just doing that nice little outline with the dark charcoal gray around the entire shape of the ornament all right you can leave it simple like that or you can take an even more delicate stroke and make tiny little ribbons and ties. So again, you want to do the little twirl in the brush and you can do little tiny loops. So it looks like a parenthesis and another little parenthesis with those little ribbons. Little loops. So parentheses, parentheses, and they connect. of white right on the top here. Okay, looks good. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. And we're going to do the patterns on top of the ornaments. So let's see here. I'm going to do a little bit of white here. And on this one, we're just going to do little tiny curves. So you just kind of wiggle the brush a little bit. So up and then down, up and then down. Do a couple of those. You can do that here on this one too, but it's a longer stretch. Looks like little waves. And then just repeat.
And then we have a bolder stripe on this one. So let's just press and then pull it across. Alright, and then this one, she's our mama brush. We're going to do some more of the white dots, but make it a little bit bolder. So I use a bigger handle, and we're going to dot out those little shapes there. That little trick. And then we'll do a few little dots on this one. Very fun. Now we want the tiniest brush for the little dots of white on the eye. So I'm going to use a little bit brush and the white and just very delicately see we come back in with those lovely flash points. It really adds a lot of personality. And then we need to continue on with the white lines here. So I'll do a white line to connect, and then across, and then little diagonal lines. And then little tiny diagonal lines here. How cute! Love it! Well, we've got some little flash points on the holly berry, so we're going to do another little tiny dot there. Just barely touch. And there we go. And then little tiny white lines in the holly leaves. A little bit of a soft curve. Very cute. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of that black with black to kind of reinforce. Up there, across. I'm going to define it up above. A sign in between the sign and the moose. Okay. And then do a few little straight lines, kind of just pull it. Looks like little lines in the wood. A little bit of water in the brush, so I'm doing little curves here. It's more of that wood grain pattern. Okay, very nice. All right, now for beginners, you can leave, the, it's all just beautiful just the way it is. Um, if you want to continue to do a little bit more of a soft blended look, you can bring in a little bit of this light, light brown. With more of that cadmium yellow. And you can do just little bits of light shading right above here, above the mouth. But it's very, very subtle.
and it's such a cartoony image that it's not really that necessary so that's why I say it's not definitely something that you could leave it a little bit more simplistic and then I'm going to work in a little bit more of that darker brown right over the top a little bit of shading right over the top here soft little strokes there and add a little bit of water to it and I work it out and it's again like a big giant triangle right up here at the top and then kind of softly curve it down over the nose here and it's all wet so it does a little soft transition And then we'll just softly blend those two together. And softly pull that back up to the middle. And softly blend that back up. Right. So this is that stage two where you can just make a decision on your wording. If you want it to just say Merry Christmas or uh, do something for your family here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do a family one. I could do Noel, that might be kind of fun. Yeah, I'm going to do Noel, that would be fun. That way I could give it as a gift. So I'm using some black paint, and if you are strapping to have a nice fine tip at the end, again, remember your little trick about twirling the head of the brush into the paint. So that's really pretty. Quite lovely. Um, and whatever tip there is, if it's all just completely dry, you can also use your permanent marker to do the lettering too, which is a great trick, especially for the tiny, tiny letters for the names that can really come in handy Ooh. so but if it's wet you definitely want to hold off on that because it will basically just instantly ruin your permanent marker so you want to avoid that if the paint's wet so we do have a little bit of wet paint but I'm going to keep mine kind of neutral today um, so that I can just give it away as a gift but to give you an idea of what it would look like to do lettering for small words I'm going to do my little signature down here at the base so again, just using this tool right here, the sign, Ta -da. and there it is. All right, we're finished with our cute little Christmas moose. He is adorable. And remember, we have all the supplies that you need on our website for this painting kit. So. Again, everything that you need to paint this comes with it, and all you have to do is put up your own water, and that's it. So, yay! I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all done such a great job. 
So again, if you have any questions, please let me know. You can also email us at info at tipsyartist.com or leave a comment below and I'll get back with you. But y'all have a beautiful holiday season. I look forward to seeing y'all again very soon. Much love to y'all. And until next time, love y'all. Toodles.